<laughs> it was yeah. very Bruce from Jaws. Yeah. Well, yeah. The baby's working. The baby's working. You don't always have to show the baby to don't know Don't always have to show the baby. Hey, welcome back to our film race series. I'm Brian. And I'm Karen. And today we're talking about doing a film race if you have kids. So Karen and I have been doing film races uh, for a long time and have kind of seen every phase of relationship through that, from not even dating, to dating, to engaged, to married, and to marry with kids and several kids. Any new parent will have this crisis moment and like, well, is that it? Am I done making movies? Can it be done? And I'm always like, this is like the best time for making movies because yes, the scheduling is different, but your kid will help you like see everything brand new again. So it's kind of like a creative renaissance in your brain. So I've encouraged many young filmmakers who are like, oh my gosh, I'm having a kid. Is this the end of my career? Like, no, it's like the start of a new phase of it that's going to be different. Our process of approaching a film race and managing it has gotten way more uh, kind of down to the letter and down to the minute. I guess you can't be as flexible uh, as you used to be, but it also forces you to be better prepared um, and execute your, your schedule better. Be more efficient. More efficient. We have three kids and we don't even always have the best childcare options. So we do, we do have a little bit of help there, but we, we do our best to make it work. So obviously the age of your children and the number of your children will help determine not only which festival to do, but your level of involvement in those festivals. One reason we like the 48 hour film project is because it's over and done with pretty quickly. So if you have like a trusted family or friends that you can send your kids to for a fun weekend, you can send them away and then you can just go and race through that weekend and you're in and out in two days and you have a film. One of the things that drew us to the 72 Fest was the extra time, even though we do have kids. Having that extra day not only gave us more time to work on the film, uh, it also gave us more time to spend with our kids so we could, we could maintain somewhat more normal hours. So on the production day, that's the day that we're both usually on set the whole day, but there's other times throughout the film race that we don't both have to be there, so one of us can be home with the kids. But that also gave us time that we could be home for dinner, we could be home for bedtimes, or we could just be home to, you know, read a quick story or play a quick game with them and then be back onto set. And then we've also done the 29 Days Later Fest. We haven't done that in a while, but like that could do 29 days to make your, your movie. So like you so have- So there you're, you're barely even getting out of your routine. It's also taking the chance to have dinner or put your kids down, read to them, is a nice chance to take a break or recenter and then get back to the work. So it's a good, good way to kind of like uh, cleanse your mind and refocus. We really like hanging out with our kids. So for us, um, watching that trade off between how much we're away versus how much we're hanging out with them uh, is something that really matters to us. So we're very careful to not do too many film races in a year or too long of ones or ones that take us away from them for too long. One thing that we do to help prep ourselves for these film races is to make sure that we spend time with our kids, intentional time with our kids leading up to the film races. To like a fun activity or go on yeah. like a field trip or something fun, yeah. Yeah, go. a lot of times we'll take the day off before a film race and go do a big family activity, like go day to the zoo or yeah, the aquarium. The arcade or, or yeah. Yeah, go to the lake or go on a hike. Prep our family for the big disruption to their routine we're about to have. And then afterwards, after the film race is over, we also try and make sure we spend that time with them again and make sure that it's really intentional. Because a lot of times you do these film races in your off time, you're doing this, you know, you work Monday through Friday, then you go and do this film race and then you're back to work on Monday right after the film race is over. And so if you can take a day off before or after to help uh, your kids feel important and loved and just make that intentional time, I think that goes a long way. This is a really nice couch, but it's also a futon and they will just set up here. We'll have popcorn, watch some dailies uh, and I'll edit right over here. And it's a lot of fun. It's become like a new tradition for the past couple ones. Our films are generally fairly family friendly. They're not always made for kids, but they are pretty clean. Uh, so our kids get excited to see what we made in the weekend. They typically want to watch it over and over and over again. And they'll typically latch onto something that is to them funny or just like, let's watch that part again where this happens. Like, that's funny to you? Okay, let's watch it again. <laughs> Getting to direct your own kid in a film is actually pretty exciting because anyone who's a parent knows their kids always surprise them. But I'm always surprised by kind of just how they, how grown up they can be and how they can like 
perceive and interpret something you've written because you might see it. And it's a lot of, it's any actor, but like your kid especially like, oh, like he, he or she thinks like me, right? So you write a certain thing and they might cause you to see something a different way. I mean, having your own kids in your film can also help make it easier to have other kids come in to be in your movie. So on Kylie, we needed to have a flashback of a kid's birthday party. Uh, but also having our kids get involved in that birthday scene, it just made it a little more fun for them. It made it easier to bring those other kids in. It just kind of made the whole thing better and smoother. If you're gonna use your kids in your films, it's a good idea to maybe set expectations with them that they might not make it in the final cut. Yeah, so we filmed our oldest for a scene in containment and um, we ended up not using it because it, the whole uh, movie just worked better as a one-man show with just Vish being like the only character in it. Our oldest's first uh, real role was in Once Upon a Bedroom where he had to play James who was afraid of having a a uh, lifeless princess in his bedroom. Getting him into his bed and just kind of ready to roll and he like paused and he closed his eyes and said, hey, what are you doing? He said, daddy, I'm just trying to imagine what it would be like to have a scary prince in my room. Yeah, he was yeah. doing that. And his reaction he gives uh, on the cutaway made the whole audience go like, oh, because it's like he was really like, really sad and scared. So that was, that was an exciting moment for me as a dad. It keeps you young and it keeps you creative having kids, um, as long as you allow it to. Some yes. people just let themselves get bogged down, but uh, we think it's it's great. It's, it's a lot harder yes. uh, with scheduling, but um, they, it, they really do keep you um, inspired. Yeah. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you next time on the Film Race series. Bye. Bye. Thank you.